Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and let's go over possibly the future number one deck in Amonkhet Standard. Marvel is banned! Marvel is banned! Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me while I pour one out for the players who truly enjoyed Marvel and Amonkhet Standard. Uh, but in reality, <laughs> I don't feel sorry for you at all. That deck was terribly unfun. But moving on from the Marvel Shakedown, let's get into the nitty gritty with Green Black Energy. This deck has been slowly creeping up the polls in playability and strength for a while now, and with Marvel out of the way, we may see it finally shine. So let's go over its card list. Starting out at the one mana slot, we've got a playset of Green Belt Rampager. Incredible early game advantage, and if you play this on turn one, it nets you an energy. Getting this out on turn two for a turn three swing is extremely strong and something you'll be doing very often. But sadly, the elephant is the only one drop in the deck. Let's move on to the two drops. Glint Sleeve Siphoner and Long Tusk Cub are here to put pressure and card advantage on your side. Not only does Glint Sleeve have evasion, but she can net you a card draw and still get in for two. Alongside her is Long Tusk Cub, a two drop powerhouse that warrants a removal spell. If he gets in, or if you have energy in the mid to late game, he turns into a force to be reckoned with. Don't mess with this kitty. One last two drop in the deck doesn't have to do with energy, but instead counters. Winding Constrictor is here to make sure your mid to late game threats come out as large as possible. And it helps create a situation where your board state is massive and difficult to deal with with mass removal. Again, the Constrictor usually warrants a removal spell, so play it out when you know you can protect it. Moving up the chain to three mana, we've got a three of Rishkar Pima Renegade. This elf comes in hot, buffing your board state and allowing your creatures with counters on them to tap for additional spells and abilities on the same turn. This can usually grant you three additional mana producers on your side, helping you to get out the big guns. And in the upper tier slots, we've got a one of Bristling Hydra and three Virtuous Gear Hulk. There are several lists that prefer the Hydras stay in the sideboard on game one, but I think a one of is good enough in here to make sure our board is staying live with creatures. Virtuous Gear Hulk is here as a giant threat that can either buff your board or create a massive creature that can get in for the win. Winding Constrictor here does fantastic work with these counters. And finally, we've got a playset of Walking Ballista. This XX creature becomes a huge threat with Winding Constrictor on the field and can even become a way to remove other creatures or finish a game indirectly. Directly. Fantastically punishing and difficult to remove, it only makes sense to have four of. Moving on to the spells, we've got a Planeswalker in the deck. Nissa, Voice of Zendikar is here and she means business. Adding counters, providing blockers, and her ultimate provides the best card advantage green can muster. Being a 3 mana Planeswalker means she's also coming in early, and helping your Constrictor and Rishkar tap for mana in the process. Moving on to Instant and Sorcery, we've got the usual playset of a tune with Aether. Thinning your deck and providing the energy needed for a turn 2 Greenbelt Rampager. A tune is a must play in this setup. Alongside that, we've got removal and buffing slash protection for our creatures. Three Blossoming Defense and four Fatal Push are here to deal with early threats and early to late game removal. Cast Out, Declaration in Stone, and Magmus Ray are the absolute worst. So giving our creatures Hexproof for a turn makes them void. It's also nice to know that Blossoming Defense can help you trade up against a tougher creature as well. But that's it for creatures and spells, let's go to lands. Four Aether Hub, four Blooming Marsh, four Hissing Quagmire, six Six forest and only two swamp. Only 20 lands here. We're leaning heavily on a tune with Aether and Rishkar to ensure our mana base isn't falling apart in the early game. So a perfect main board hand may look something like this. One forest, one blooming marsh, one a tune with Aether, one green belt rampager, one fatal push, one Winding Constrictor, and one card of your choosing. Long Tusk Cup or Nissa Voice Zendikar are two cards I like here. Thanks to a tune with Aether, we can keep our two land hand and feel swell about it. That also ensures a turn two Greenbelt Rampager with the ability to keep a Fatal Push up. Here are the first three cards I would love to draw as well. Rishkar, Pima Renegade, Blossoming Defense, and another land. The deck works by slowly to steadily to monstrously overwhelming your opponent with powerful creatures and threats. The sideboard, now that Marvel is no longer here, goes something like this. Two Heroic Intervention for protection against removal and board wipes. Two Transgress the Mind for early game damage against control matchups. One Lost Legacy to deal with combo decks like New Perspective and Kefnet or Torrential Gear Hulk control. Two Manglehorn to help against Mardu vehicles. Two Bristling Hydra to deal against aggressive removal strategies. Two Yehini Undying Partisan for added aggression, two Yehini's Expertise for creature removal, and two Never to Return for Planeswalker Hate and creature removal. And that is it for the deck. Overall, it's a very early to mid game aggression deck. It can really go above and beyond once your board stabilizes. I'll be posting gameplay videos of this next week, so keep those in mind. The deck itself is coming out to around 200 tickets ish at MTGO Traders. And of course, the money cards in here are Fatal Push, Walking Ballista, and Virtuous Gear Hulk. The dual lands are pricey as well, but for possibly the best deck in the format, it would make any 
modern player's wallet very happy. It's a lot of fun to play and even more fun to win. End screen, like the video if you liked it, comment below on what cards I should add or remove to the deck. Would love to hear what you have to say. I'm always in the comments below commenting back as often as I can. For now though, subscribe to more MPGO Traders content in the future and next week previews start properly. So let's get Hour of Devastation started. See you guys in the next video.